Could we stop an asteroid? Asteroids represent a very real threat to our survival. On top of our man-made issues that threaten to wipe out the population like climate change or nuclear weapons, asteroids are one of the more tangible external things that we should be worried about. Scientists like Stephen Hawking were so worried about the likelihood of an asteroid hitting us in the next few hundred years or so that he felt our only means of survival was to start colonizing other planets. One wiped the dinosaurs off the Earth when it hit Mexico 66 million years ago, so we know it's possible. But how likely is it to happen, and if an asteroid was on a collision course with us, do we stand any chance of stopping it? Before we look at this, a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it, and also to subscribe to Brain Impact for more videos just like this one. Although asteroids of various sizes have a flight path to Earth, most of them get burnt up in our atmosphere, and the larger ones aren't big enough to do serious damage. Also, it's far more likely that an asteroid will hit water or no man's land than an inhabited space. It's also worth noting that probability-wise, it's not likely that an asteroid of extinction size is going to hit us tomorrow. Asteroids with a 1 km diameter strike Earth every 500,000 years on average. 5 km objects hit Earth approximately once every 20 million years. To put that size into perspective, the asteroid that hit the dinosaurs was thought to be 10 km wide. So what does the size of an asteroid need to be before causing real damage? Well, ones that are bigger than a car can smash windows and cause sunburn just from it burning up in our atmosphere. If they're as big as a house, they can explode in the atmosphere with a force greater than the nuclear bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 by the US to mark the beginning of the end of World War II. A rock this size could flatten most buildings within one and a half miles of ground zero. If the rock were the size of a 20-story building, then, with the right composition, speed, and angle of attack, it could leave destruction stretching the size of central Paris. If we go even bigger, to the size of a football field, this could obliterate the city of New York, cause an earthquake that could be felt by people as far as 1,000 miles away. If an asteroid was more than half a mile wide, we'd have to start thinking about the impact to the entire world. An area as big as Virginia could be destroyed and the resulting dust thrown into the air would lead to dramatic climate change. A Mount Everest-sized asteroid would leave a crater stretching more than 100 miles wide and obliterate an area bigger than that. At this point, we're looking at extinction territory. Can we stop this threat? Well, a team is dedicated to doing just this. They look at incidents like the Tunguska event of 1908 in Siberia to give an indicator of the kind of damage an asteroid can do. It's thought a rock of about 120 feet across entered the atmosphere of Siberia and then detonated in the sky releasing the energy of 158 Hiroshima bombs. This was a reminder of the damage that asteroids can do. In 1908, NASA's Near Earth Object Program and Italy's Asiago DLR Asteroid Survey didn't exist. But now they scan our size for Near Earth Objects or NEOs that could threaten the planet. They're specifically looking for the 10km monsters that we mentioned earlier. If one were on course for Earth, then there are several mitigations that have been proposed to save the planet. The obvious answer of just nuking the rock has been ruled out due to the fact that it would create a litter of space debris and also because there's a possibility that the rock could be pulled back together by gravity. Instead, the technique that the scientific community has largely agreed upon is to knock our potential threat off course. Presenting to the U.S. Congress in 2007, NASA proposed the best solution as conducting a series of standoff nuclear explosions to push the asteroid off course as opposed to surface blasts that would scatter rock. It's thought that our global nuclear arsenal of weaponry would be more than enough to do the job. And the tricky bit of getting them into place seems to be tried and tested as well. The near-Earth asteroid rendezvous Shoemaker probe managed to fly past an asteroid in 1997 then it orbited one in 2000 and moved on to becoming the first spacecraft to land on an asteroid in 2001. As long as the rock could be identified early enough to carry out the mission, then it's thought that averting this threat is very possible. This is where we stand at the moment. We have confidence in stopping an asteroid using this method. However, it's not the cleanest and most efficient way of doing things. But future technology has presented solutions for this issue. Scientists believe that robotic landers could be used to deflect asteroids, either with mounted thrusters or solar flares. On top of this, there has also been suggestions of using an enormous spacecraft known as a gravity tractor, which would use its own mass to tug the deadly rock away from Earth. Although the threat of an asteroid with enough force to lead to our destruction is rare, 
it is still a very real threat and probability suggests that it will happen again. The question is when rather than if. However, if we continue watching the skies and developing technology at the rate we're currently doing, then there's no reason why we can't be prepared to send an asteroid off course and away from our extinction. We already have an effective method as a baseline with room for improvement so, to answer the question, could we stop an asteroid, the answer is probably yes, and in the future that probably will be less and less a factor in this answer. So, this helps to answer the big asteroid question and hopefully makes it a little easier to sleep at night. What do you think about the probability of an asteroid hitting us? Are you worried or do you think that humanity has got this in hand? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Brain Impact for more. Thanks for watching.